everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So last week I showed you how to use the match shadow material type in the scan line renderer. And this week I'll be showing you how to do a similar technique in the mental ray renderer in 3D Studio Max. We're going to be putting a teapot into this scene, but first we need to sort of tweak the image a little bit in Photoshop. So what we want to do is simplify things so that we can have a camera looking straight out at 90 degrees at the horizon and not have the image look any look weird. So what we're going to do is with from the ruler, control R in case you don't have it, is click drag down to where you think the horizon line is. Um, on this image it probably is about, about right here. So then what I'll do is select the marquee tool and I'll click drag about where I think the smaller half of the image is going to be. And then I will click drag that selection up. So it looks like we, we need to get rid of about 40 pixels from the top. So I'm going to select my crop tool and I'm just going to eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect and hit enter. And now the image is, is perfectly top and bottom with the horizon right down the middle. All we have to do from here is save it out. So file, save as, I'm going to save it as a, a JPEG and I'll call it background. You can see I've already got that set up there. Okay, yeah, sure. I'm just going to jump over and we're going to get the background set up. I'm going to do this pretty quickly because I've done this before and I know you already know how to do it. So let's get started. I'm going to open up my material editor for good measure and we're going to go rendering, environment, use map, a bitmap, okay, background, open, click drag as an instance, okay, and then we need it in the viewport background, so views, viewport background, background, use the environment, and display it, done. So now that we've got it set up in our viewport and you followed all that, let's go ahead and, uh, and get this technique underway. So I'm going to click on cameras, select a free camera, and I'm just going to create that anywhere, it doesn't really matter. I hit hotkey E, I'm going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees, just like that. And I'm going to move it up a little bit off the uh, off the Z plane there. So we now have uh, something that resembles a real camera. I'm going to right click on perspective, views, camera. And then finally I'm going to go ahead and enable the safe frame. There we go. We now have our, our actual um, frame set up. And so from here, it's all very easy and familiar. You can go ahead and create a plane, just a simple ground plane for your shadow. And I'm going to create a teapot on top. Let's try to move it away from that fencing. It'll look weird. There we go. I'm going to give it a couple segments, make it look a little bit better. And now it just becomes a materials and lighting problem. So I'm going to click on my material editor. I'm going to assign a gray material to that teapot and a matte shadow material to the ground plane. So we want this right here, matte shadow. Click OK. Now remember, in Mental Ray, you need to actually assign the camera mapped background to the matte shadow material. So I'm going to click drag, move it into that slot, click OK, and then drag that onto the plane object. Now, the background scene looks like it's just a cloudy day, so we don't need any kind of fancy lighting at all. I'm just going to click on Lighting, Standard, Skylight, click. And I'm going to tweak my final gather settings a little bit, just because I know it'll look a little bit weird if I don't. And that's it. Let's go ahead and render see how this looks. And there you have it. That's just what we wanted. We've got the teapot resting perfectly within the scene, approximately camera matched, and uh, the materials and the lighting, good enough for now. But feel free to take this technique and extend it however you need. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday Movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads at my website, www.mrbluesummers.com. 